Well, for almost a century, tests like the ACT and the SAT have served as a pathway to college. The better your score, potentially, the better your school. But now, one Twin Cities University says it's done using the test to evaluate students. And as Adam Duxter explains, the president there says privilege is a key reason why. Founded seven years before the Civil War was fought, Hamlin University in St. Paul has long stood for education, which President Dr. Fanny's Miller knows goes far beyond a classroom for most students. There are things that they have lived that exposes them to all kinds of things, travel, museums, theater. So when it comes to evaluating them based on ACT or SAT scores, a student is not a number. The school is ending the process entirely. A student is an individual, a person first. And if you see a person as a person and you look at what they are capable of, what they've accomplished and what they are capable of, that tells you more about the individual than anything else. Well, Hamlin will be one of the first in the state to stop requiring the scores, they're not the only ones. St. Thomas and McAllister College have permanently stopped. Well, the U of M says they're putting a pause on the practice for the next few years. What we know is that the tests that are out there Many of them have inherent biases in them. Something Dr. Miller says is sometimes as simple as having enough money to afford test prep programs. And when you've got inherent biases that privilege some over the other, then you have a test that you have to step back and take a look at it, whether or not that is equitable for all. Instead, she says the school will use grades, extracurriculars and other things in the students files to pick out the next generation for the historic university. We know there will be some naysayers who will think that Hamlin will have lowered their standards because we've eliminated standardized test scores. If you only looked at those test scores, you would have missed a student like that. And as for whether or not this will actually make a difference, in 2021, a study published inside Higher Ed showed a 10 to 12 percent increase in first time students from underrepresented racial and ethnic backgrounds applying at schools that did cut their requirements, mm -hmm. both for the ACT and the SAT. Yeah, when you first hear the headline, you're like, "Woo, less tests. But when you actually hear the reasoning behind it, it it's so much more than that. So very Absolutely. interesting story. Thank you, Adam.